Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this pretty blue jay in watercolour for Dina Tollefson's Bluebird Art Challenge. And because I painted it on a new paper for me, I'll also be talking a bit about my first impressions on Fabriano Artistico's cold press watercolour paper. I mentioned this in my recent art haul video and I've been really excited to try it out, so I hope you enjoy the video and maybe find it useful. All the materials I'm using today will be listed in the description box below, along with a reference photo from Pixabay and a link to Dina Tollefson's channel if you want to know more about this and future art challenges. Okay, so whilst I'm getting my watercolours ready, let's talk a bit about this paper. Fabriano Artistico watercolour paper is 100% cotton, mould made and chlorine and acid free. It's also archival and is internally and externally sized, which means it should be very absorbent and suitable for a range of techniques, such as lifting and scraping and so on. It can also be used for both water mixable media as well as dry media like charcoal or pencils, although you might prefer the hot press version of this paper for those. Personally, I like the more textured cold press surface for my watercolour paintings, but if you prefer, Fabriano Artistico is available in a variety of surfaces and sizes and can also be bought in a traditional or extra white colour. So let's get on and try it out. I've mixed together ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and mauve and began by painting in a very watery mix of this onto dry paper for the lightest area of the bird's beak, using a small side zero round brush. I did the same on the bird's eye, adding in a bit more ultramarine blue here. Close up you can see the texture of the paper which isn't too dissimilar to the Arches cold press paper I usually use and love, but this traditional coloured paper does appear more yellow in tone. If that's not for you though, like I said, you can also get this paper in extra white if you prefer. Now another thing I wanted to mention about the paper itself before I get into talking about how I found painting on it is the weight. So this paper is 140 pounds or 300 GSM weight which again is the same as my Archer's paper but in my opinion at least there is a definite difference. I bought this paper in a 12 by 18 inch block which is glued on all four sides and this is really helpful to prevent your paper warping or buckling if you're adding lots of water or paint and it's especially good if you're painting on larger sheets of paper like this. However because I wanted to paint a smaller piece for today's video I removed a sheet, cut it to size and taped it down to a board. In doing so, I noticed that the paper felt more flimsy than my £140 Arches paper, but I can't really explain why, as both this and Arches paper are both internally and externally sized and the same weight. So if you've got any thoughts or comments on this, please do let me know in the comments section below. So with that said, let's talk about what this paper is like to paint on. For the darkest details on the beak and eye, I painted onto dry paper using a really concentrated mix of neutral tint, and didn't notice any difference to my regular paper. I was able to paint in fine details, soften edges, and use all the same methods and techniques I usually do when painting wet on dry, so it was all good and I really enjoyed it. I also had no problem painting a second darker layer onto the feathers around the eye. For the purpley feathers on the head and neck though, I decided to use the wet in wet technique instead. And this is where you pre-wet the surface of your paper first with clean water before dropping in paint. This allowed me to more quickly and loosely fill this area in and it also meant I could drop in some other colours in places here and there and have them mix and blend together on the surface of the damp paper. Here I dropped in some burnt sienna around the top of the wing and used a damp brush to soften out any hard edges that formed. I continued working down the bird's body using the same ultramarine, burnt sienna and mauve mix and painting onto damp paper and used the very tip of my brush to pull some of the paint onto the dry paper to create some fine feather details. 
Whilst the paper was still damp, I also added in some more concentrated paint to any darker areas I could see from my reference photo. Once that area was dry, it was time to paint in the lighter wing feathers, and for this I mixed my ultramarine blue with a bit of Daniel Smith cobalt teal blue that I had left over on my palette. I painted on a watery base layer of this onto the dry paper, being careful to avoid the bright white feathers. Whilst this was still wet, I also added in some Prussian blue to the longer tail feathers here, just to change the colour up a bit. Until this point in the painting, in terms of the way I was able to apply paint to the watercolour paper, I hadn't noticed much different to my regular Arches paper, or my much loved Etcher sketchbooks, but when it came to lifting off the pigment to lighten up some of those tail feathers, I did notice quite a big difference with this paper. It was so easy to do. So this could be considered a real advantage for this Fabriano Artistico paper if that's a technique you like to use a lot in your paintings, and it certainly proved useful in the tail feathers of my J. But it also means that if, like me, you like to add multiple layers to your paintings, you have to make sure your first underneath layers are completely super dry before you add the next ones and that you are very gentle when layering and glazing over those next layers so you don't disturb the first ones. And I did find that out the hard way when trying to layer over the brighter blues and purples to the tips of the bird's tail feathers. Next I went back to my size 0 round brush and added some more concentrated blue and a bit more detail to some of the wing feathers. I painted these onto dry paper and softened any edges out with a clean damp brush. For the more muted blue feathers on the side here, I reverted back to the size 8 brush and some more Prussian blue, and added in a bit of burnt sienna as well. Then it was just a case of carefully adding more layers and building up the details, and doing it as gently as I could using the least amount of water so as not to disturb any of my previous layers. Painting on this paper did take a bit of getting used to, and being new to this brand of cold press paper, I wasn't sure how much layering it would take, so I was a bit cautious. My first impression today though was that it wasn't as robust or strong as Archer's, but maybe it's unfair to make so many comparisons on a first impression, and chances are it might just take a bit of getting used to. It may be that after doing a few more paintings, I'll become more comfortable with it and know its limitations and be able to paint more instinctively. So if this is a paper you've used in your watercolour paintings, then I'd love to know what techniques you find work best on it, so do drop me a comment below. With the main feather shapes defined, it was time to go back and sort out the tail feathers, and here I painted some indigo and blended it with some of the cobalt blue teal and mauve on my palette. I'm painting individual feathers now rather than overall values, and really enjoyed this part as this little jay really started to come to life. For the very darkest black feathers, I used concentrated neutral tints like I had on the beak, eyes, and markings on the head. It has subtle purple undertones to it that I thought would be more interesting than flat black on its own. Here I'm also darkening up some of the wing feathers with more indigo, and further darkening in between some of the wings underneath here. I use the very tip of my size 8 brush here, which holds more water than the smaller detail brush, and a steady hand to get nice crisp fine lines, and I'm painting them with more concentrated neutral tint onto dry paper. With the darkest values painted, I needed to correct some of the values on the rest of the bird, so here I'm painting a further layer to the tail feathers, 
and despite initial reservations or concerns, this paper held up really well without any linting or signs of damage. Once I was happier with my values and everything was completely dry, I switched back to my size 0 brush and some really concentrated neutral tint to add in those all important distinctive black markings to the feathers. Now for the rest of the painting I went back to the wet in wet technique to paint in the bird's foot, the branch and the background. I found that with this paper the water takes a bit longer to soak in than perhaps the cotton paper in my etcher sketchbook or the arches I mentioned before. And maybe the trick is to be a bit more patient and give the water more time to soak in before adding paint. You can also add another layer of clean water once the first has soaked in a bit to give you a better wet in wet result and more time before the paper dries. You don't want puddles of water but just allowing time for the water to soak into the paper a bit will provide a nice evenly wet surface for your paint to move into and help you achieve some nice results. I think this could be said of any cotton watercolour paper, but it was good to remind myself of that when trying this one out today. For the branch I applied first a layer of burnt sienna as I'd used this to mix my purple grey colour and thought it would help to pull the painting together. You can also see here just how easy it is to lift out some highlights just by running a clean damp brush along the edge of the branch. Whilst the paper was still wet, I then added some more neutral tint rather than darker brown, again to help make the piece more cohesive, and I really liked how easy and quick this part of the painting was, compared to all the intricate feather details earlier. I added even more concentrated neutral tint to add more depth, and again was able to easily lift out some highlights on the top of the branch. and a small area just under the bird's body. I repeated this process on the other side and whilst that was drying added another layer to the feathers on the bird's head and neck. This time though I added the same colour mix as before as a glaze onto the dry paper, softening out any hard edges with my damp brush. And even dropping in some more mauve and ultramarine whilst the paper was still wet to correct my values. I let this all completely dry again before painting the background, and rather than copy the reference photo and paint a green background, I decided to stick with my limited palette and use burnt sienna. I thought this orangey brown would also contrast well with the blue feathers of the jay, and being that I'm trying to be a bit braver and more expressive with my backgrounds lately, I thought I'd go for it and see what happens. I pre-wet some of the area around the bird with clean water and then used a 3 quarter inch angle shader brush to apply the paint. This brush would allow me to get into some of the smaller areas around the bird but was big enough to prevent me from being too meticulous about it. I was a bit worried that I'd spoil the painting and I know many painters would have painted the background first, but for me having the focus of the painting already done allows me to better judge what colour and look to go for with the background. I wanted to have some brush strokes visible and added a few splatters at the end just to finish it off. I really enjoyed trying out Fabriano Artistico's watercolour paper today and I quite like how this blue jay turned out, but let me know what you think. A big thank you to Dina Tollison for another fun challenge and a big thank you to you guys for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share and subscribe and hit the bell icon too to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Take care, have a great week, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.